and they lived happily ever after. This is after my perfect soulmate, he or she completes me. He or she is my better half. Is marriage usually a bed of roses? Often, these are among many notions that couples expect after their wedding day. Stay tuned as Dr. Njeriga Shohi sheds light on some of the wrong notions people have about becoming one flesh. Welcome to today's classroom. We have the marriage classroom today. And thank you, I can see we have new members and we welcome you. So thank you, you learn together and even our viewers, you are very welcome to this class and we still have space for many more. Maybe just to remind us of what we learned last time. We learned about, uh, maybe those who are in class can remind us, we have uh, Winnie. Do you want to tell us what we learned? Maybe if you can remember any of the classes that we learned. Um, I think I can remember about uh, marriage, whether it's um, covenant or a contract mm -hmm. and um, what came out clearly mm -hmm. is that um, marriage is a covenant mm -hmm. and not a contract because for contract we have um, what we call an exit clause mm -hmm. but for marriage mm -hmm. once you enter into a marriage God purpose it to be permanent until death do us or do you part. Thank you. I hope we can all remember that. Anybody to remind us of what we learned? Yes, I, I also remember in the in our early classes, we looked at the definition of marriage mm -hmm. and we also looked at uh, marriage as God intended it to, to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember the emphasis yes. that marriage was supposed to be between man and woman. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like Adam and Steve, mm -hmm. this Adam and Eve. True. That was the initial intention of, of marriage as God intended it to be. Yes, yes. thank you. And we also looked at also purposes of marriage. Eh? And maybe some of us may be wondering what happened to some of our students. Now, because they are in marriage classroom, one of the purposes was procreation. <laughs> and we are so happy to celebrate that we already are added in the number because the Moasias already have welcomed a new baby boy. And so that means in the world, we have already have one more already go sure. and multiply increase and fill the earth. earth and i pray that all of us do our <laughs> part okay at the, the beginning we said marriage is the only institution where you get a certificate before you go for the training <laughs> so the training comes after so when you are given the, the certificate is to do all that pertains to mm -hmm. the certificate. Mm -hmm. So we learned today something that's quite interesting that came out from our last uh, uh, lesson or part of the lesson about some were asking how do the two become one. Mm -hmm. You see according to uh, what we know about mathematics, me being a math teacher, it is one plus one equals two. Mm -hmm. But do you know what God's mathematics is? It is one plus one equals one. Now you ask me base what? Remember <laughs> those base? <laughs> uh, you, you learned those who did mathematics base what? And uh, then you realize that the two shall become one. And I, I don't know, this is God's mathematics. For us, we almost expect that a half plus a half would be equals to one. one. But according to the Bible and the word of God, this does not work. We still have no complete part. But we look at it afterwards. So we all want to ask ourselves, now that this is God's mathematics, and you look at exactly what God intended us, that the two, we say the two shall become one. as we can see here. Now, let's see, read the word of God from our textbook. And we said our textbook is the, the Bible. Somebody to read us the scripture from uh, Matthew 19, four to six. And as you understand, this is uh, mm. a quotation from the same Bible in Genesis. What we have, Genesis two, verse uh, 24 and 25, repeated in Matthew, uh, Chapter 19, 4 to 6, and also 
Mark 10, 6 to 9, and also emphasized again, Ephesians 5, verse that one. But we're only going to read one of the scriptures. That is 19, 4 to 6. Somebody can uh -huh. read for What's us. Minute? Yes, and loudly. Okay. Matthew 19, from verse 4 to 6. Huh? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made the male and female and said, for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Winnie. Now you realize that the emphasis is, so then they are no longer two but one flesh and okay. so it is true that one a man and a woman become one and we want to understand how do they become one so what do you think are the wrong notions about when we talk about one flesh the ideas that are out there or people think about what it means to become one flesh maybe you can get before i tell you then you can give me Michael, you're smiling. <laughs> I think you may have one. Give us one. I, I think one of them is what you have written there. Mm -hmm. you, you hear many times that somebody introducing maybe the spouse and says, this is my other half or my oh, better half. Better half. Uh, or, and that means, therefore, that that person is not yet complete. Mm -hmm. So the incompleteness that what you have written there, half plus a half is equal to one. Mm -hmm. Uh, in God's eyes, it's not a half plus a half. Mm -hmm. It is a male and female, a complete person, plus a complete person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that means we only join together when we are whole, not that one has an, our part. I don't know, Aston, did you look for your half or you're looking for your the other person who would make you one? I, I think uh, in my understanding, I was not looking for my half mm -hmm. because I was already whole. Mm -hmm. There was no half that was missing. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I was looking for another whole that when I joined to my whole, we just become one whole union. You have had people talking about that I'm looking for my, for rib, my rib, my missing rib. Yes. Right? That means you are not functional <laughs> yes. fully without your rib. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did it, did, did it fit or it did it? <laughs> Um, if, if, I'm, if I'm to put it in terms of, uh, of, uh, of ribs, mm. uh, I think I got a, a, one of my stubborn ribs. <laughs> I got one of my stubborn ribs, but I will, I will keep it and uh, I'm still functioning. Okay, yes. yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. You see, true as you say, we are whole as God created us. When the Bible says that he knew us before we were formed, he didn't know us as trying to match us. So he created us as individuals. So we are whole even as we are married or unmarried. We are individuals before God. And that's why he says, I know you by your name. It is not like God will shift and start calling me Mrs. Now, when I'm not Mrs., it's like I don't have another title. He knows me by my name. And maybe that can be affirmed from the word of God. We can read the scripture. It's, it's, that's why we need to learn so much about the word of God because this is our instructional manual. What does the Bible say in Psalms 139 verse, we can start 13. Lois, if you can be able to find it. Yes. Or Psalm 139, mm -hmm. verse 13, it says, For you created my innermost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. Continue. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. Mm -hmm. Verse 15, My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the sacred places, place, when I was woven together in the depth of the earth. Verse 16, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. True. And then 17. 17, how precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. 
Now you realize the psalmist is marveling that God knew him before. But you can see he's not trying to link that you made me because you had, you know, you wanted me to make complete me on this side. Mm -hmm. But he was whole as he was created. Mm -hmm. Then even books about him was written or about her was written even before he had lived in one of them. And then talks about precious mm -hmm. and vast the thoughts of God about him. And so it is important that we realize whether married or unmarried, we are complete or we are whole. We are whole persons, like what uh, uh, Mr. Aston is saying. Thank you. Better have. Another thing, you know, we can add here, those who have said, there are those who think they are looking for their ribs or their bones, missing bones. Okay. Have you ever heard of where people think when they are getting married, they say, I want to be complete? It's more like that when you're talking about the better half. That or if somebody says, he completes me, okay, or she completes me. Is there a way that a man can complete the other person? Do we complete or complement? Compliment. Yes. So it is about not, it, we don't complete because when you talk about she completes me, that means there is a place where you are lacking or you are not complete at all. You are not whole. Okay, it is true as we looked at uh, uh, when God saw that man was alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, the issue was this, that he needed a helper, but that, that does not mean he couldn't have done the work. It would have taken longer. It was the fact what we talk about making work easier. But that does not mean that in himself he lacked something that he could not have done alone. It's only that this time oh, you will only, you know, and the animals seem to be two by two, even mm -hmm. when uh, they were going to the Noah's Ark. But man, man was, you know, he was alone. Get a helper, okay, and the, the companion. But it was not that he was incomplete. Mm -hmm. I think that's something we need to understand. He may have been looking like he's alone or lonely, but he was not incomplete, that God had to patch up something. Mm -hmm. He got another whole person again. Okay? Mm. Yes. I, I could yeah. be mean that those people who say that so and so completes me yeah. is actually what we have said complement, mm -hmm. only that somebody feels that because I'm not able to do this, mm -hmm. then and my spouse is able to do it, mm -hmm. then that is what they mean by completes me. Yes. And uh, one of the things that are, from just what you've said, some insight that I'm getting mm. is that uh, God took, uh, created the woman from the man. So mm -hmm. the man was complete, mm -hmm. but God decided to get part of him mm -hmm. uh, to make another human being. Another human being. Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, I get that. But I think that when people are talking about so-and-so completes me or my spouse completes me, mm -hmm. maybe it could be a notion that mm -hmm. um, there is something that I'm unable to do. Mm -hmm. I like organize myself and my spouse <laughs> organizes me. <laughs> I, 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 I agree with the Molly Mungashua here, mm -hmm. but I think uh, even as we use that to to mean that um, um, uh, my spouse is able to do that which mm -hmm. I cannot mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. When we use that term complete, mm -hmm. then I think we're using it in the wrong perspective. The wrong perspective. Yeah? Yes. And uh, which I think we understand where that uh, someone may be coming from mm -hmm. when you refer to your spouse as completing, mm -hmm. but it is in the wrong perspective. It's not complete, mm -hmm. but complement. And I think complement. that's what we are learning that's today are learning to correct today. and ensure that we'll never use that complete that's term no, again. It, it, true, because yeah. now, when we he's saying that uh, if some you are not organized and somebody comes to organize is because we are different mm. but yet unique. Just the like same way, if you get a child, you don't get a real photocopy of yourself. You mm. may be the father and the mother, but you realize that child seems so different. So you cannot say he has okay. There is that part of you that you like inherited, but they come out so unique mm. and sometimes so different from us. And that means God just intended to show you that they are his and he knows them before even they are formed in our wombs. Sure. Okay? Yes, so the another notion. Mm -hmm. Now there is always that I the notion that once we get married, you know, we live happily ever after. Or our marriage is made in heaven. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of union made in heaven? I always say and so is thunder. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, that is. 
<laughs> so <laughs> even <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> so even that that is made in heaven. In heaven yes. Okay, <laughs> but it strikes. really it strikes and <laughs> sounds down here. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, I, but, but I also think my my take is that. Uh, <laughs> Yes, made, it may be made in heaven mm. because it's a technical God who actually made the two of you to mm. come together, mm. but it is lived on earth. True. Now that is true. Mm. We, it's made in heaven or ordained in heaven, but lived here. Mm. This is where Rabba meets the, the, road. the road. So the, we have this idea like that one of Sidarera. You know, we read those stories. Remember mm. so, Snow White? and Sidarera, mm. and always it adds, and they lived uh, happily uh, ever uh, after. Uh, so there was this girl who was being given the story of Sidarera, and then after it reached somewhere, now the ad, it's like the mother said, uh, and they lived happily ever after. And the girl said, no, she didn't. She asked, was asked why. She got married. And, you know, it's like, you know, the issue was this. There seems to have either something she has observed, either maybe of the mother, that that idea of you get married to your prince charming and live happily ever after, like it was never true for her because Sidarera got married. And for her, the idea of marriage is that you're not happy. But you know, that is also what the world is trying to paint us, yeah. to paint to us, that this is the reality. But I believe even where the scripture we have read, uh, Matthew 19, Jesus was even trying to correct an, a wrong notion. Mm -hmm. And we will look at it later, maybe later when we we'll be looking at issues about marriage, where somebody was trying to say, you know, why I can I divorce or separate my wife? for any reason, you know, get any reason for just getting. But he said, this was not so, okay? Mm -hmm. So what did God intend? And this is what we are looking at, marriage classroom. What was God's intention? I believe he was true and genuine when he said, two, the two shall become one, or mm -hmm. two are better than one. So it is not where we go for suffering. Mm -hmm. It is where we go for it enjoying mm -hmm. as God intended mm -hmm. and that's why we are coming back to our manual the Bible because if we do it as the Bible God is true and faithful he says let every man be a liar but God be true okay now any other so when we are talking about made in heaven we're saying it's going to be lived on earth so but that does not mean when it is lived on earth it is worse off it's only that the reality here that's what we call sometimes reality shows in the <laughs> in the media is never reality it's something that has been acted and what you've been told reality is something that has even been made to remove their bad they have shared our movies of alejandro and uh, and you know and it almost always ends when the girl who was despised is married mm -hmm. by the prince charming <laughs> and then they don't even give us a story beyond there because they want us to think that they lived happily ever okay. after. Okay. But it's all right because I believe that God intends that we can live happily ever after, after. marriage. And the other one is where we talk about somebody also being your soulmate. I think still on the better half. But when we talk about somebody being a soulmate or the perfect soulmate, what happens? We keep thinking that our spouses will never have any flaws, okay? They are angels. And somebody said, you are an angel until somebody unruffles your feathers. We? Oui? <laughs> and then what does, what? Okay. When you realize this, the honeymoon is over and you are at home, what happens? I, I, I want to probably ask a question mm -hmm. on this issue of soulmates. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, we used mm -hmm. to hear that uh, in life, Everyone has a soulmate, mm -hmm. and God only made one soulmate for you. This soulmate could be in Japan, it could be in China, it could be in your village at home, but there's only one soulmate. Mm -hmm. Is is this issue of soulmate a, rea a reality? Is it is it true that God made me and made one soulmate whom I'm supposed to live my life looking for this soulmate? Mm -hmm. If I find my soulmate. Mm -hmm then my marriage will be the one that was directly made from heaven. Mm -hmm. If I don't find my soulmate, then I will leave the thunder that was also made from, <laughs> from heaven. No, but, but perhaps, <laughs> yeah. to understand this, we need to, uh, to further understand 
or define what a soulmate mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Because according to me, my understanding is that a soulmate is someone whom you share the same soul. So okay. and maybe if I understand it that is way, is it practical that you can have which which soul? of course it's not practical, yes, and yes. I think that's why it's a myth. Yes. So we may need to understand what does a soulmate mean, or is this so. someone who can read your soul? What mm -hmm. what do we think a soulmate uh, a soulmate means? I, I think I, I think that when we are concerning the question that Aston has actually okay. asked, uh, then in that case, my my thinking in that case we have uh, people who have lost their uh, spouses uh, in the course of time and they end up getting married to another person. So if that particular person was the soulmate, how come then they are, they are able to get another soulmate? <laughs> you know, that, that's why I think that to me, the, the issue of um, a perfect soulmate does not necessarily arise. Mm -hmm. It is a person that you meet and you feel like despite the flaws, of this particular person we can be able to live together some of the flaws you may not know before marriage mm. but even as you come to discover them through marriage mm. you you know the biblical foundation of your 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 your, your marriage mm. and therefore you decide to continue despite the flaws it's not somebody who is perfect mm -hmm. i don't think there is anybody who is a perfect yes thank you i think uh, now that uh, gives us some you know some work for discussion Andrin, exactly, are these notions truly really wrong or do people have an idea of exactly maybe what they, it's only that they have, just like what you were saying, complementing and completing, they may be having an idea but the wrong idea. Then we will look at the next lesson, how God intended us to be in one flesh and in what ways and how can we enhance that being one flesh. So thank you. Matthew 19 verse 4 to 6. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So then, they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. In today's discussion during the break... There's a question I asked, Michael Chipiwa. And it was just about a soulmate. Yeah? Because I think some of these terms, we normally use them out here just because we've had other people using them without really understanding what it means. Yeah, so and you see, for me, to be honest, I think I'm having my own also misconception of that particular um, word. Mm -hmm. So, who can maybe perhaps help me understand what a soulmate means when you say you are my soulmate? Generally, people use that to mean people who are, whom you are so connected uh, in terms of uh, uh, you, you, you feel like this person is part of you. Mm -hmm. You're so connected, you feel like this part of the person is part of you. But uh, there are no two souls which can uh, kind of, uh, this one here is my soulmate or something like that. I don't think there is anything like that. Do but we, so do we, do we, to some, maybe some of our friends and maybe some of our, uh, you know, our parents or our children, we feel so much attached. Mm. But we don't use the term soulmate, soulmate. to uh, uh, on, on those children or our parents or friends, mm -hmm. other than maybe that person who is your spouse. Mm -hmm. And that's why I guess Malim was saying that... Um, the, this is a this is a misconception, and I think that's why I want to agree with uh, with Gashoji that this issue of soulmate is a is a myth, which may not actually be real because if we if we take it in terms of someone who was created for you, then it will mean that there is a specific criteria in which you can get to know this is the person who was created for me. God will have given us a formula or something that you'd want to employ for you to know so-and-so was created for me. But it's not possible. And then in the class, he shared a, a good example. Some people get married today and they, they live happily ever after, if there's anything like that, for the next maybe five, six, ten years. And during that time, they believe that they were soulmates. But then along the line, something happens and, uh, and this person goes on to marry another person. And uh, they start saying, now I've found my real soulmate. Is it scriptural, first of all? Is there anything like soulmate? No, Even not with the same words, but maybe by definition, as a soulmate in scripture. I don't think What about this is. definition of bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh? You know, meaning that... Uh, that was a very physical... That was a very physical definition. When Adam saw Eve, he physically perceived 
someone or a creature that has similar bones, similar flesh, similar appearance. So it was a very physical definition. It was not a soul or a spiritual definition which you can say Adam saw his soulmate. There is also this issue, and it happens even in Christian circles, whereby you are married to somebody mm -hmm. and that person passes on. Yeah. You know, that person passes, passes on. And a number of years later, or within some time later, you find the same person now marrying another person. Mm -hmm. And they, they are happy together. Mm -hmm. Just like probably they were happy there before. And as the Bible scri the scripture says, there will be no marriage in heaven. So, so this person decides to marry here. So if I thought there was a, a soulmate, th that soul is uh, spiritual. Yeah. The, and therefore there should be marriage also in heaven. But now there is no marriage in heaven. So I don't think, I think it's a notion that um, has been propagated so many times and so often mm -hmm. until we have believed that it is true. Mm -hmm. I think what is clear is that uh, all these are um, almost uh, propagated, eh? but they're not backed by the scripture. Yeah. I think maybe one person may have started it, and then over time it continues, it continues the study, until it appears like the truth. And I think then that's why we are here to be able to, to, to uh, like um, make it clear what is the truth per the Bible, mm -hmm. and what is the perceived uh, truth uh, as per the society, where by attempts even as Christians we find ourselves being misled. Yeah, you are, they are um, comfortably saying this is my, my soulmate, this is my, this one completes me, yeah? Yet um, it's something that started long time ago by someone who um, made it to appear like the truth as per what he believes and was not backed by, 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 by the word. And then there's something also, um, Mr. Gashua, you had said about um, how even when uh, during death, huh, you'll find uh, that uh, that person or that particular, if it's a widow or a widow, you'll be able to get um, a spouse and you can still get married and live there and continue living happy. I think perhaps also this notion of um, coming together, yeah, where one and one becomes one and not to the question that the teacher has shown us. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible says that you're supposed to be together until death, do you part? Mm -hmm. Meaning that when you die, mm -hmm. the, God has a way of ensuring that that particular equation, he works on that equation during that um, moment of death, so that now he allows you to be able to complete it through now the second union that you get yourself in. And that means he has the powers, or he has a way of ensuring that he works his way, mm -hmm. so that now you're able to, comp to have that one plus one through another subsequent marriage upon the demise of your, of your partner. I don't know if you get my... I'm, I'm getting it, and it just um, affirms what the teacher was saying that even before I got married, I was still whole. Yes. Such that if my wife, God forbid, passes on, mm -hmm. I'll still remain whole. Yes. And I can, if I get into another marriage, that formula of one plus one is equals to one will still, will still apply. Mm -hmm. Because I was still whole even before I got, even before I got married. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how I'm getting it. I think, I think, uh, lucky enough, amongst us here, I think there are chemistry teachers. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I remember my, my chemistry, in, I think it was in Form 1 or Form 2, we were being told there are two types. There's a mixture mm -hmm. and there was something else. A compound. Yes, and a compound. <laughs> a mixture is one you can separate whatever you brought together. Yes. <laughs> but a compound in Mekua, see, I'm getting it right. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe what God has in mind is when a man comes together with a woman, you don't become a mixture, you become a compound. <laughs> 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 I think also, uh, one of the notions that we, we had mm. was uh, they complete one another. Mm. But you said we don't complete, but you complement. Mm. So when we was given that example, mm. I thought of uh, Hansa. Mm. So I'm thinking like this is a man and this is the woman. Mm. And then the spaces, they are the ones that need to be filled. Ah. So when the woman comes, um, uh, when the two come together, they feel they make one thing. So we complement one another. So I think that's what happens. Like God creates us with our own differences and our own two issues. But when you get the, your person, your, your partner, you come and complement one another so you become one. Yeah, okay. But I'm looking forward perhaps to what the teacher will, will, will confirm about how this one is created. Yeah, maybe it is uh, maybe through the example that we've shared. So let's, I'm looking forward to the next class. Sure. Stay tuned for the next lesson, Understanding God's Mathematics on the Marriage Classroom. To get the notes of today's lesson, visit www.mbcimedia.com.
stroke the marriage classroom. Catch the repeat of the marriage classroom every Tuesday at 10 p.m.